Hello! In this video we're going to be talking about some different terms that we use in ceramics as well as some techniques and processes. First off, ceramics is pretty similar to clay, so we think of them as one and the same. Um, the only difference is that ceramics would be clay that's been dried and heated and it undergoes a chemical change which makes it strong and durable. Um, the first thing that we're going to talk about would be some different hand building techniques. So when I say hand building, it's basically you build with your hands as opposed to something like wheel throwing where you throw on the wheel. Um, so the hand building techniques that we're going to talk about would be pinch, slab, and coil. The first hand building technique we're going to talk about is pinching. So basically all you're doing is pinching clay between your thumb and your fingers to construct objects. So you can make pinch pots, you can use it as a sculptural technique. Um, there's just a whole bunch of ways that you can use this method. The next technique would be slab and that's just using a rolling pin and rolling out flat pieces of clay and then constructing objects with them. So for example you could make tiles, you could make cups or boxes or any other sort of constructed objects that use flat pieces. And then the last technique for hand building would be a coil. And this is probably something you've all done as a little kid when you had Play-Doh. And that would be just rolling long strips of clay with your hands. And then you can coil the objects around themselves and start building upwards. So you can make interesting vessels with different shapes out of that. The next thing we're going to discuss is how to attach different pieces of clay together. And we call this welding clay. Um, it's super, super important because a lot of times when you try and just stick pieces of clay together like this, it might stick for a little bit, but as the clay starts to dry, it shrinks. And the problem with that is as it shrinks, it pulls away from itself. And so all of your pieces will just fall right off and they won't attach anymore. So we have a technique called welding in which we score, slip, and smear. So think the three S's. So we want to score the clay by scratching up the surface and making it really rough, almost like Velcro. So make it nice and rough. I'm using a needle tool. You could use a fork or any other sort of sharp instrument and then we're going to score both sides of the parts that you wish to attach so nice and rough then we're going to add slip which is watered down clay so slip acts like glue in this instance and depending on how dry your clay is you'll probably want to use more slip if your clay is really plastic and wet you probably don't need as much slip so we'll just add some slip to the pieces that we want to attach and make sure that they still stay nice and rough. So if it gets too smooth, you might want to rough it up again. And then we're going to stick the pieces together and then smear the seams together. Now sometimes it's really hard to smear the seams together. So there are a few techniques you can do for that. You can take a thin coil of clay and stick it in the seam and use that to smear upwards and downwards. Or you could take a modeling tool, such as this slimy one I have here, um, and just kind of pull downwards or upwards to smear your seams together. So if your fingers can't reach it, find a tool that can. Now, once we've scored, slipped, and smeared, or welded our pieces together, it's not going to come off. It has become officially one piece of clay. As you can see here, I've got a big pile of different pieces of clay, and they're all kind of at different levels of dryness. So you might think that you can just kind of mush it all back together and continue working with it. 
But unfortunately, there are some problems with that. So clay doesn't like to go back together very easily, um, especially if they're at different levels of dryness. It'll just kind of flop back apart and be kind of separate pieces. Not to mention there'd be a bunch of like chunks of harder clay or um, pockets of air in there and we don't really want those things if we want to continue working with our clay. So there's a good thing here, we can recycle it, we can use it again. So to recycle clay we take all these big chunks and kind of push it into a big blob as much as possible, kind of bang it on the table, it gets really loud, you scare people with it. It's my favorite thing to do in class is scare kids by slamming things on tables. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna poke some holes in it. I'm just using a leftover paintbrush to do that. And once I have holes in it, I'm gonna fill those holes with water. And once we have this full of water, we're just going to throw the clay back in a bag and let it sit. I usually let it sit overnight. And make sure you close the bag up nice and tight. And we'll set it aside so that the water can kind of seep into the clay a little bit. Then what we need to do is kind of reintegrate all of those different pieces of clay into one solid piece of clay. And we do that by a process called wedging. And wedging clay is a way of making clay more workable by improving the texture and getting rid of air bubbles. There are a couple different ways to wedge clay. I use the spiral method, but there's also a method called ram's head where it makes two spirals on either side. So I'm just going to kind of move the clay in quarter turns and kind of push down harder on one edge and curl it around the other edge this way. And what that does, it's almost like kneading bread. It pushes out the air bubbles and keeps your clay nice and soft. Now, doing small things like this is pretty easy, but the more clay you do, the more of a workout it is, and you'll probably break a sweat doing it. So I had mentioned earlier when wedging clay that it removes air bubbles, and we really don't want air bubbles in clay because it can cause some pretty treacherous results when we fire it. Air bubbles and also thick clay, if your clay is too thick and thus still wet when you put it in the kiln, can cause your project to explode. And that's really not the result most people want to have when they fire their clay. So um, the reason for that is very sciency. So if we think about it, if you have a pocket of air or maybe some wet clay that's in the kiln, as the temperature heats up, the molecules so your air molecules or your water molecules are just kind of bouncing around doing their thing and as it heats up they start moving faster and faster and faster and that speed starts to build up pressure inside of your clay and eventually there's so much pressure that it has nowhere to go and your clay just can't withstand the pressure anymore and poof explosions things that we need to do to kind of prevent explosions would be to make sure that our clay isn't super thick or we let it dry for a very long time to make sure that there is absolutely no moisture left in it. And if you have perhaps enclosed pockets of air, so maybe you put two pinch pots together so it's one big pocket, just take a needle tool and poke a hole through it. That way there's a place for the air to escape. Um, we also make sure we wedge our clay to get rid of tiny little air bubbles, which might cause cracks in our clay. Now the question is, when do these things start to explode? Do they explode way at the end of the firing process or do they explode at the beginning? Well, I found that clay tends to explode right around 212 degrees. And what is that? Boiling point. That's when where water turns to steam.
And I have to say, everyone always asks, what's it like when something explodes in the kiln? Like, is it like a huge explosion? I have to say it's actually pretty uneventful. I've only heard it a couple times, but normally it's just a poof, and that's all you get. This beastie right here is what we call a kiln. And a kiln is basically an oven on steroids. It's what we use to fire our clay, and it fires to really hot temperatures. So the clay that we use in class is called low fire clay, and that fires to 1,881 degrees. So that's hotter than lava, fun fact. Um, kilns can get even hotter than that. It's so hot right now. And you can use different types of kilns, like this is an electric kiln, there are gas kilns, wood-fired kilns, and you could go really old school and dig a pit and put a bunch of stuff and light it on fire and bury it and do a pit firing. But we stick with the simple one, which is an electric one where you hit start and it's good to go.